Loving Father who art in heaven, tonight once more, Lord, we are assembled in your house of worship, Lord, because we desire for uh, to be more closely acquainted with your truths for these times. We pray you'll forgive us of our sins and you'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And as we're about to open your inspired book, to look at one of the most solemn warnings that can ever be given to mankind. I pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit's assistance to be with my mind and to be with the minds of the listeners. And Lord, that as we sit and listen, that these things will be a part of our lives and will transform us and make us better Christians. Looking forward to your blessed coming is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Right, tonight's message is a very serious one, and as a matter of fact, it is probably the most solemn message one can give in these series, the seven last plagues. Now, we'll jump right into our message by posing a question. Are we ready to write? Now, in some cases, we're filling in the yellow, in some cases, the red. Question number one now says, what is in store for those who receive the mark of the what? Now, what is the mark of the beast? Before we go any further, quick revision. Somebody talk to me now. Give me the right answer. What is the mark of the beast? Sunday worship. Legislated. All right. Who is the beast? Don't talk to me now. Who is the beast? I hear some mumbling like we're not sure. And if I ask you what's your name, you'll tell me your name, right? Who is the beast? Roman Catholic Church system. What is his mark? No, uh, uh, uh. Sunday worship is his mark. Saints, we got to know this, saints. We can't be fumbling. It's too late to fumble now. The beast is the Catholic Church system. Sunday is his mark. Just like how God's seal is his seventh day Sabbath. Linked with other truths for the time. Are you with me? Saints, we got we to know this. Because we, you know, this is very, very imperative to us now. Now, so what is in store for those who receive the mark of the beast? The scripture says now, and the third angel followed them, says now, if you had a third, you must have a what? And a second, you must have a what? All right, so, and the third angel followed them, saying, with a loud voice, underscore, loud, which is speaker he has now, a loud voice, PA system. If any man, black man, white man, China man, any man, worship the beast, which is the Catholic Church system, saints, you gotta know this. Write it down in your book. Email it to yourself. WhatsApp it to yourself. You gotta know this. The beast is the Catholic Church system, and his image and receive his mark, which is Sunday worship legislated. Nobody has the mark yet. How do I know? Because the last time I checked, I came here, I was thirsty. I went to buy a, a bottle of water at a, play, a store down there. Once the system is enforced, in, in, in you can't buy and sell. So no one has the mark of the beast yet. But it's coming, right? In his forehead or in his hand, the text says, shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Right? Uh, Revelation 16, 1 says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. The Bible says now, And I saw under the sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled the what? The what? So, brothers and sisters, the answer is they will suffer the seven last plagues. Now, let me tell you, if you think you can handle this tonight, if you think you can handle these seven last plagues, then go ahead. But I want to appeal to you as best as I know how. In my only tongue, I know how to speak. Do all you can in the name of Jesus to avoid these plagues. If you plan to be alive. Same time, I'm appealing to you. The Bible says if your right hand offends you, cut it off. Whatsoever you have to cut off, pluck out, in order to be saved, you need to do it. And I'm, I'm saying, Lord, listen, if you know I'm going to be lost, Lord Jesus, put me to sleep. 
Now I'm serious, saints. And I appeal to you. You do not want to receive these plagues. And I'm going to show you. Very, very serious. Now why are they called the seven last plagues? Not a question. I'm throwing it out there now. What happened? That's right. That's it. Nahum 1.9 says affliction shall not rise a second time. In other words, there will be no more plagues after this. Nobody's going to sin and we're going to start over again. No sorry, Bob. After this, there will be no more. Taylor Bunch, a, a powerful biblical scholar in our church, Taylor Bunch wrote this in his book, The Revelation Road. The final judgments are called the seven last plagues because there are no others to follow. Question number two now says now, what two major events will signal the time for the falling of the plagues? How do we know that the plagues haven't started yet? There are two events that must precede the plagues. Are you with me? Revelation 7, 1 says now, and after these, I saw four angels standing the four corners of the earth holding the four winds. Winds, we learned, symbolize strife and commotion on the earth. That the wind should not blow on the earth, which sea nor tree, right? And I saw another angel having, ascending from the east, having the what? So my dear friends, an angel from the east, and he said now, her not the earth, neither the sea, till we have sealed the servants of God in their what? Now, what is the seal of God we learned earlier? God's seventh-day Sabbath. And why the forehead? Exactly. And I told you tonight, Christianity is not a jump-up, jump-up religion. This is an intelligent religion. And I, 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 I pity those people whose church service is just shouting and shouting and shouting like you're in a gym. Saints, you got to think before you shout. And one of, the, one of the, the demise of the black race is that we are an emotional people. And sometimes, no, emotions is good, don't get me wrong. But emotions should not precede reasoning. You got to think before you shout. And unfortunately, listen, we are emotional. Praise him, praise him, praise him. And the man hasn't said anything yet. And you leave church, church was good. What did he say? I don't know, but it was good, girl. So, based on this, before the plagues begin to fall, fill it in now. There must be a final sealing of God's people, not the world, God's people. And what is the sealing? Uh, both intellectually and spiritually. So, you got you to gotta know it in your head. And that's why we take time to give you these lessons. You can go back home at your leisure and you can go back over in your Bibles, mark your Bibles, old and new, with your pencils, your pen, your highlighter, your crayon, your marker, whatever you use. Be able to find these things for yourself in your own Bible. And then it's not just knowing it, it ought to change your attitude, change the way you look, change the way you dress, change your outlook on life change your attitude are you with me so it's not just saying I know I know I know and you won't do the ceiling is us both intellectually and spiritually so we cannot be moved and nothing is more repulsive than a mean and a rude Christian so first God must seal his people the second thing that must happen before the plagues begin to fall, this is a big one now. And we're, and we're, I'm, I'm shifting gear, I'm cruising tonight, right? Jesus, fill in now, ceasing his intercession in the heavenly sanctuary. Now tonight, he's there, beloved, interceding for you and I. He's been there a mighty long time. He's interceding, but once he finishes intercession, the jig is up. And I'm going to show you tonight that the jig is almost up. Almost up. The Bible says in Revelation 22, 11, once he finishes this, he lifts his hand 
and he says he that is unjust let him be unjust still he which is filthy let him be filthy still he that is righteous let him be righteous still he that is holy let him be what so when Jesus pronounced this benediction whatever state you are in that's the state you'll be in throughout all eternity there is no changing in Revelation 8 verse 5 when John saw Jesus he saw him with a golden censer you know heaven don't speak English unfortunately there's a heavenly language and when we pray the Holy Spirit he codifies our, our prayers into a heavenly language and it is mingled with the Christ righteousness then it goes up and when John saw Jesus the Bible says now that he says the angel took the censer so the censer right here this is used when we pray it is mingled with Christ righteousness and that's how it's codified into heavenly language but look what happens now with the censer the Bible says now when Christ finished the session the Bible says and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire off the altar and cast it where into the earth and there was voices and thunder and lightning and an earthquake now notice now note he does not merely set the censer down nearby so it can be picked up and used later friends the Bible says he cast it completely out of heaven why because it will never be used again when this happens we won't need to pray anymore we will talk face to face as a man speaketh to his friends right when this happens intercession for sinners on earth will have come to its end and there will be no more opportunity to get right so tonight if you plan to get right you better get right tonight and I would leave this place saints and not be right I'm serious now watch this thing now after the sealing, sealing Jesus will step out from between the father and man and God will keep silent no longer but pour out his wrath upon those who have rejected the truths plural for this time he will stand up put on his garments of vengeance and then the seven last plagues will plow the earth and let me tell you there's a special one for Pope Antonio a special one and I'm going to show you this one now watch this thing now question number three now, I'm, now saints I'm building I'm taking my time at night now whom did Isaiah say the inhabitants of earth will not have someday Isaiah 59 says this now watch it now and he saw that there was no man and he wondered that there was what Isaiah said where is the intercessor the Bible says now therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness it sustained him friends the Bible says now for he put on the righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation and he put on the garments of vengeance friends Isaiah says a time will come where we will have no intercessor tonight God he wears the Christ wears the ephod he has the human thumb in the, the, the ephod symbolized the 12 tribes of Israel but it symbolized all of humanity tonight this is how near Jesus puts your name to his heart He's, you're right here your name is indicative represented right here you're near to his heart tonight he's there to plead for you to beg for you to intercede for you but once he finishes it's over now let's do some mathematics I'm gonna give you some dates and I know I'm in an Adventist church so I hope I get the right answer because if not we're not leaving here tonight I'm just kidding all right 27 AD what happened Christ was baptized all right I hear one little mumbling that's not good all right 31 AD 34 AD all right good when did Jesus ascend to heaven what year mumbling so Holy Ghost is weak tonight now saints think it through now I want you to think when did Christ die let's think 31 AD all right when he died Sabbath he spent this weekend in the grave 
he rose Sunday morning. He said to Mary, touch me not. For what? So he went to heaven. What year was that? Are you sure? Then he came back that Sunday morning and he said to Philip, to Dalton Thomas, see, put your finger in my what? All right, what year was that? 31 AD. In Acts chapter 1, he spent 40 days on earth. What year was that? AD 31. Then he left. What year did he leave? So the final time he left was when? Now saints, watch this thing now. Watch this now. 31 AD, Jesus left to go to heaven. Now, what part of the sanctuary did Jesus went into? Huh? Holy place. Are you sure? Now, I'm going to give you a scripture. I'm not, I'm not rolling dice tonight. As the Rasta man said, we need to know. We're not guessing tonight. Now, watch this now. In the book of Hebrews 9 11, the Bible says now, Paul says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered what? Into the one. Not the most holy place. I'm going to tell you how, how if, listen, if you have an NIV tonight, you need to park that Bible. That is a Jesuit Bible, it's a Roman Catholic Bible. If you have an NIV tonight, anybody has one tonight? No, anybody has one? The demonstration. Anybody have one tonight? No one has an NIV. Because I was, was going to ask you to read something for me. If you turn to the NIV and you read this verse, the NIV says that Jesus went to the most holy place. That is error. Because if, if he did, there's no 1844. You see how dangerous that, that means? We are not relevant. Saints, the Bible says he went to the most holy place. Now, let me holy place. Now, let me give you some math. Now, I should have put it in my slide. How old is the earth? And please don't tell me no billions, because I'm gonna flog somebody tonight. Six thousand years, saints. We are creation. We're evolutionists. Forget these fossil foolishness. The earth is six thousand years. Now, guess what? Now, God dwells in eternity. Are you with me? Now because of sin, God broke off a piece of eternity and gave it to us and it's called T-I-M-E, time. The purpose of time is to get us ready for eternity. Now you know how much time God gave the earth to get ready? He gave the earth 6,000 years. Now, the 7,000 years, we going to be in heaven. That's the millennium. So in all, God gave us 7,000 years, but you can't count the thousand because we're not going to be on earth. Friends, God gave us 6,000 years. Now, this is the whole presentation I'm giving you in a nutshell. Now, from Adam to the flood, Bible scholars says, and that is 2,000 years. I, I, I can prove that, but not tonight, because we'll be here till tomorrow morning. Right? From from Adam, from, from sin to the flood is 2,000 years. Watch it now. From the flood to when Christ came is how many what? Because we say, don't we say Christ came 2,000 years ago? Now say, if that is true, how much time do we have left in the 6,000? Much two. Because two plus two is four. Isn't that right? Now say, watch this thing now. So if we say from when Christ went to heaven is about 4,000 years. So we have a little less than two left. Now say, we only have 6,000 left. Now watch this thing now. Christ went to heaven in 31 AD. He did not enter the most holy, he entered the holy place. And I'm going to show you how I know that. There were three furnitures in there. You had the table of showbread, freshly baked bread, symbolizing every, every, every Sabbath who should have a fresh, powerful sermon. Not some stale bread, ginger bread, or ginger sermon. Fresh sermon. And one of the greatest insults a pastor or an elder can say, boy, I never know if we're preaching. Or I may just tell me I'll do something. Did you ought not say that? And I tell my elders, even if you prepare something the morning, don't ever say, saints, boy, we put something together last night. That's unacceptable. It is. 
Because if you return tithe, you are paying for a minister who's supposed to serve as a church. If you sent your kids to school, you're paying good money. And then the teachers say, well, but I mean, how is that going on? You'll be like, no, that's unacceptable. Now watch this now. Table of showbread, seven candlesticks of the Holy Spirit, and the altar, incense, three furnitures. Watch this thing now. Now, John is on the Isle of Patmos. Right? And when John saw Jesus after he went to heaven, the Bible says now, John says, and I turn to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw what? So what apartment did John see? Think. Look, let me back up. It has to be the Holy Seven chemists right there. Are you with me? Now, let me give you the time frame now. And among the seven candlesticks was one and this is Jesus. Now, when John saw Jesus, when John was on the Isle of Patmos the year 96 AD. So over 60 something years after he was banished, Christ was in heaven. When he saw Jesus, after 60 years, he saw Jesus not in the holy place, but not, not in the most holy, but in the holy place. So the NIV is dead wrong. The NIV can't be right. Now, let's add the math now. We know that from 3180 to 1844, how long is that? Any mathematician in here? Pull out your calculators and get your phone out. I want you to do the math. Hold on. So saints, based on this, Jesus, how long did Christ spend in the holy place? Come on. Because 1844, something happened. He moved. So how long did Jesus spend in the holy place? Do the math. If, this, if, if he went, he left 31 AD, and in 1844 he moved, it's simple, simple math. How long did he spend? 1800 and what? Now, saints, if we said you only have 2,000 years left, if you subtract 1810 from 2,000, how long you, how much you have left? Less than 200. 190. Saints, this thing is almost finished. Now watch this thing now. In 1844, Jesus, he moved. He moved. So he spent 810 years in the holy place. I wonder how long he's been in the most holy place now. Now do the math, saints. Because if we're in 2018, are you with me? Just subtract 2018 from 1844 and you'll get the math. Now I did the math. I hope I'm correct. I'm not a good mathematician, right? But I got, I hope I'm correct, 174 years. Now friends, it tells me that based on this number and this number, since we're almost at the end of the 2,000 years. Since you only have 6,000 years. You don't have no 7,000. It shows me tonight when the Bible says the long patience of God. Saints, let me tell you something. God is merciful. For a man to stand 1810 years in one some of us can't sit still for 10 minutes <laughs> I gotta go preacher I gotta run I gotta, where you going I don't know we just out of the place but he's so patient you know what because tonight he's not willing that any one of us should perish because Jesus knows once he finishes this saint it doesn't matter how pretty you look how smart you are he won't meet a hill of beans so God is patient tonight now watch this thing now Revelation 15 says now Bible says but let me bypass that so here he is now this is the map but the Bible says one day he will finish his intercession he turns and as he leaves the most holy place the record says he pauses by the altar he didn't just he didn't run out like that when he finishes he says it is finished and as he exits the sanctuary, he stops by the altar of incense. Because there were some prayers that were offered up while he was in the most holy place, he attends to. Saints, once he stops here, then, beloved, comes the seven last plagues, brothers and sisters. Saints, we are here tonight. 
And I, I appeal to you as best as I know how. Saints, tomorrow night, the, the, the lights come down. Friday morning, I'm out of this place. And saints, we don't know what the future holds. You may never see me again on this side of the Jordan. So I appeal to you, you got to take your salvation very seriously. Now watch this now. Question number four now says now. Has God shown the seven last plagues in prophetic visions to some of his servants by using different symbols? Yes. A whole lot of prophets saw the same thing. The answer is yes. Let me give you some of them now. So a, a lot of prophets saw the same thing. Let's fill them in real quick now, right? Right fast now, right? Um, Ezekiel saw it, and Ezekiel called it the slaughter weapons. That is the seven last plague. The shepherd's rod have it wrong. I wish I had time to talk about shepherd's rod, but I don't tonight. Ezekiel saw the same thing. Ezekiel saw it as the slaughter weapons. Same thing in Ezekiel chapter uh, 9 verse 5. David saw it, but David called it pestilence and destruction. That's the seven last plagues. Ezekiel called it slaughter weapons uh, because somebody going to die. Uh, David called it pestilence and destruction because something going to be destroyed. All right? Isaiah called it man's heart will melt. You think you have a problem tonight? You all know what problem is. You think because you don't have no credit on your phone, that's a problem? You haven't seen nothing yet. And Isaiah called it the garments of vengeance. Right now he has on the priestly robe. But when he finishes, he put on the garments of vengeance and a war time. So when you see all these phraseologies, it is pointing to the seven last plagues. Slaughter weapon, pestilence destruction, man's heart melt garments of vengeance. These are all the seven last plagues from a different angle. Same thing. Now I got a hurry because some of you are writing one letter at a time. That ain't gonna work tonight. Right? I gotta move. Alright. Here it is now. Zachariah saw it. Zachariah when he saw it, he said, flesh, eyes, mouth, consume away. People tongue just rotten out of their mouth. And as they saw it, that's the seven last plagues I'm going to show you tonight. Are you with me? Uh, uh, Isaiah again saw it is the day of the Lord. He's saying the Sabbath. This is the day of the Lord. Cometh both cruel and wrath. This is the seven last plagues he saw. Are you with me? Um, Joel, that minor prophet, called it destruction from the Almighty. Everywhere is destruction. East, west, north, south, underground, upground. No hiding place. But in Jesus. Are you with me? Same thing. Right? And then we have Jesus himself. And he has his two cents. Jesus called it distress of nations and perplexity. Everywhere you go is problem. He is making reference to the seven last plagues. And Daniel. Daniel, that prophet, called it the time of trouble. Here it is. Now. Different authors saw it from different perspectives, but it is still the same event, the seven last place. And I, I appeal to you, check upon me. Get your Bibles, read these things in this context, and you'll see I am making sense tonight. Now, friends, plagues are not new, not right. There's nothing new because God sent how many plagues? To who? Egypt. Now, I said to myself, Lord, you sent 10 plagues to Egypt. I, I, I'm going to show you them, right? Why 10? We're told in great controversy. We looked at the prophet last night, Ellen White. We talked about her last night. She wrote a book called, she says this now, the plagues upon Egypt when God was about to deliver Israel were what? Similar in what? To those more terrible and extensive judgments which are to fall upon the world just before the final so there are some similarities between the ten that hit Egypt and the seven that's going to hit us right? well not us, hit them because I don't plan to get any of it right? note now why ten plagues? the back up now why did God send ten plagues? Egypt? Because, friends, it, it means something you see, 
the Israelites, the Egyptians, were what we call polytheistic. Poly means more than one. They had ten gods. Each plague symbolized a deity that they worshipped. They worshipped the Nile, the, the, the frog, the, the, the mosquito, the bull. Everything they worshipped. Everything was a god. So the ten plagues was to target a specific god that they worshipped. Are you with me? They were polytheistic. Poly is more than one. But Israel was monotheistic. Hear, O Israel, the Lord God is what? One. Are you with me? Now watch this thing now, friends. Here it is now. Each of the ten plagues upon Egypt were painful, literal. It was a deity they worshipped by the Egyptians, right? Here is one. The, I think the fifth plague was the frog. There was a god in Egypt called Hecu. It was a frog goddess. This was a deity they worshipped. So when God sent the frogs, it was to show, listen, I mean you run things. I create everything. Where's your, where's your frog god? Why don't your frog god get rid of all the frogs? Are you with me? It wasn't by accident, right? And you see these Egyptians, they had all the frogs and a whole lot of stuff. Right? Here it is now. We're told the second plague brought frogs over Egypt. Frogs were held as sacred Egyptian. It was one of their deities, the Hiku, the frog goddess, had thought to have creative power. So each plague in Egypt was a blow against some god. Look at our day now. Similarly, each seven last plagues will be literal and strike a blow at some false aspect of modern Babylon. So out of the seven plagues, each of them is to demonstrate or demolish some false idea that we have today. Are you with me? Now, there are some similarities now. Watch this thing now. Seven plagues. Now, why does God send seven and not ten? Why does he take away three? Saints, because the controversy is over seven. I told you before, seven, if you plan to be saved tonight, and I say it on the authority of God, you must get used to seven. One of these days, you're going to have to embrace it. Saints, we showed you, there were seven days of creation. Seven days before the flood, the animals came in the ark. Seven days, Noah and the family stayed in the ark before it rained. Seven fat, seven skinny cow, seven withered cow. Here's a corn in Pharaoh's dream. There were seven years, seven years times two, Jacob worked for Rachel. Seven times Elijah prayed on Mount Carmel before it rained. Seven times Naaman dipped in the Jordan. There were seven sabbatical years before the great release. Seven, seven times Elijah prayed. Now, that's our, our, our repetition, right? Uh, here it is now. Let me back up. The Israelites, Israelites, uh, the, the, the Israelites marched around Jericho seven days with seven priests, with seven trumpets, seven times on the seven day Sabbath, and Jericho came down. It's all about seven. Look at this thing now, saying, No, what happened now? There were seven years Nebuchadnezzar was humiliated before the Lord. There were seven feast days. We know them Passover, unleavened bread, first fruit, Pentecost, atonement, trumpet, tabernacle. Solomon was seven years building the temple and he kept the feast for seven days. Listen, J Job had seven sons. When his friends came to visit, they sat seven days, seven nights in silence. Afterward, he, he, he offered seven burnt offerings of bullock, seven rams. Seven times ten set apart for the Jews. Seven times the priest cast the blood of the sacrifice. Friends, uh, Samson, who was a Rasta man, he had seven locks. You check upon me in judges. His thing was just bushy and wild. He had seven locks. By accident, no, God's trying to tell us something. God deals in seven. Check, watch this now. Nebuchadnezzar made an image to worship in Daniel chapter 5, I think, or, 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 or 3. Uh, he called seven kinds of officials. They were princes, governors, captains, judges, treasurers, councils, and they were sheriffs. That the three Hebrew boys who refused to worship the image, the, the, the furnace was heated seven times. They were cast in the furnace. Saints, watch this now. Look, that's the Old Testament. For you, some of you know, New Testament Christians who don't believe in the old. Let me give you the new. In the new, saints, we got seven eyes of the Lord. Run to and forth. Seven times 70. Peter asks Jesus, Lord, how often should I forgive? Seven times 70. 490, what he gave to the Jews, right? Mary Magdalene, who was a prostitute, had seven devils in her. There were seven deacons chosen to help the church. New Testament, watch this now. The seven churches symbolizing the character of Christianity. Seven eyes of the Lord. Seven times uh, forgiveness. Se uh, my double this thing up. Here it is. 
seven golden candlesticks, seven stars in Christ's right hand, seven angels, seven trumpets, seven seals, seven thunder, seven last plagues, seven hills surrounding you, Jerusalem. It's all about seven. Where you get one from? And here it is. It will take us seven days to get to heaven. And I'm going to show you. So you have to get used to seven. And in case you didn't know, you are in a seven-day Adventist church. And there's a seven-day Adventist preacher preaching to you. So what part of seven you don't understand? Huh? The SRDN. Saints, I'm telling you. I don't know how we get the Sunday thing from. And when he was on the cross, he spoke seven last words. Now watch this thing now. I haven't even gotten in my plagues yet. All right. These are the Egyptian plagues. These are ours. These are similarities. First and foremost, the first of the Egyptian is a parallel to our second and third. I'm going to show you. The sixth was boil. Parallels with our first. Right? The seventh hail pars with the seven. So the seven and the seven are identical. I wonder why. I'm gonna show you the night. Oh yes. Watch this thing now. And then the ninth and the fifth is the same as darkness. So there are some similarities with their ten and our seven. Now, and then we have death. Now, number ten. Question number five now says now. Will any of the wicked die under the fallen seven last plagues? Will anybody die? Well, I know that I've got that answer. Every church I go in, I get, I get three answers. Some say no. Let me see all those who say, who say no. Now put your hand up. All right, my sister. One, two. Those who say yes. All right, one. <laughs> those who say I don't know. You're honest. You're honest. And honesty is the best quality, right? <laughs> now, all these answers can't be right. Now, those who say that nobody will die under the plagues, they use one text. You ready for it? Write it down. Revelation chapter 9, verse 6. Now, I was always, I was always taught in school to get the context. You read the preceding text and the succeeding text to get the context. Are you with me? Now, saints, if you plan to be a good Bible student, is a word for you. Context, context, context. Now, context now. Look at this now. The Bible says, and in those days, man shall what? And shall not what? And shall desire to what? And death shall what? So some, some say based on this, see the preacher, nobody will die. But let's look at the preceding text to get the context now. Verse number one of Revelation, because we're in verse 6. So what happened to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1? You get the context now. Verse 1 says now, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven on the earth, and to him was given a key to the what? Friends, this is making a reference to the trumpets. That's the fifth trumpet, not the plagues. This is making reference to the trump. There are seven trumpets which are not the plagues. So this text is in context with the fifth trumpet, not the seven last plagues. So they use this out of context. So the answer, somebody's going to die. Now how do I know somebody's going to die? David saw it. David says in Psalm 91, we quote this text, David says, he, read it now, he that what? Of the Most High shall do what? I will save the Lord. He's my what? And my what else? Am I with us? I will what? Watch it now. Surely he shall what? From the what? And for the what? Or noisome plagues. Look what David says now. David says, Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by the another what? Now when an arrow flies, it is intended to do what? To kill. Watch it now. Verse 6 now says, Nor from the pestilence that walketh at what? Nor the what? destruction or death or death David says now he says in verse number six a thousand shall what at that what and what else at what hand but shall not what 
he says, only with thine eyes shall thou behold the what? So David says, yes, 10,000 shall fall over there and 10,000, but against your dwelling, it shall not come. Then he says now, uh, 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 Revelation says, Revelation 18 now says now, there sh then shall her plagues come in one day. What? And what else? And what else? So when the plagues come, death come, mourning and famine, I'm going to talk about the famine tonight. So friends, the answer is yes, people will die under the plagues. And those who survive it will be destroyed by Christ's brightness. So this nonsense about the one that that is heresy. They are using the wrong key. And they can't open the door. So yes, people will die. Are you with me? Now, question number six now. I'm trying to get in the plague, but Lord, it's so, so slow. What will not be mingled with the falling of the seven last plagues? The Bible says now, John says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is the plagues, which is what? Pour that without what? Mixture into the cup, right? Habakkuk says now, O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath. Remember what? So God, as Habakkuk said, Lord, please, when you, when you, when you lick us, remember mercy. But the Bible says when the plagues begin to fall, there will be no mercy. Let me tell you something. So you know, as, as Jamaicans, we have a heavy hand. And I got three kids. And one of them, Lizzie, is just challenging. And one night I was spanking that child. And Elder, my daughter said, Daddy, mercy! And I'm telling you something, man. It touched my heart. She said, mercy, Daddy, mercy! And it just, the plea from my child, we just said, go on your bed. <laughs> you know how we do it. Saints, when these plagues begin to fall, there'll be no mercy. Great controversy said this now. This is important now. The author says, all, and where I'm from, all means all. All the judgments upon man prior to the close of probation have been mingled with what? Right? The pleading blood of Jesus Christ has shielded the sinner from, the, from receiving the full measure. But in the final judgment, wrath is there is no mercy. Listen, when the plague, when, when the flood came in 2348, there was mercy. There was mercy. When God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah in 922 BC, there was mercy. When he burnt Jerusalem in 70 AD, there was mercy. But when the plague began to fall, there is no mercy. Let me illustrate. Now, I don't drink, but the first time I drank this right here, rum, my body mixed it with this, and then I drank that. Because rum is so strong. I don't know how people drink it, man, early in the morning. It's like fire in your bosom. When God pour out plagues, judgment, Jesus has always diluted it. He's the filter. In other words, you don't get the full hundred. So you get a diluted version. Saints, but in the seven last plagues, if rum is poured out, rum you're going to get. There is nobody here to say, spear, spear, spear the sinner. You're getting the full hundred. This is serious tonight. And I'm trying to appeal to you, if you have any sense, you need to seek how to avoid these plagues. Now, what will be the duration, number seven now, of the seven last plagues? How long will the plagues last now? The Bible tells us. Now, I know somebody always challenged me, but tonight, you better come right, because I'm going to stick you up tonight. You better come right tonight, and with scripture. Now, look here, said, watch this now. How long will it last? The Bible tells us. Revelation 18, plague says now, therefore, Shall her plagues come in what? Death, mourning, and what? Now, based on this text, this text says one day. Now, friends, because it is in Bible, we know it, it's a prophecy, so it cannot be one 24-hour period. In prophecy, a day symbolizes a year. So when the Bible says her plague shall come in one day, it must be what? You say, hold on, one year. Yes, look at this now. Now, 
You say, preacher, no, nah, I don't believe that. Well, if we don't apply the day to our year principle here, then we can't apply it here. Now, Ezekiel says now, <clears throat> in prophecy, a day is a year. Numbers 14, 34, Ezekiel 4, 6. After the number of the days in which you search the land, even 40 days, each day a year. So they, 40 years. Now watch this now. In Revelation chapter, um, day for a year. So the answer is one day, which is interpreted one year. You say, Lord have mercy. One year with the plagues? Yes. Now some will differ. And again, this is where I stand. Unless a man can prove me otherwise from scripture, here I stand and I shall not be moved. Now, if we don't apply the day to our year principle in that text, we can't apply it someplace and not because. How do I know, Elder? Revelation 81 now. This is how we say it will take us seven days to get to heaven. The Bible says now, and when he had opened the seventh seal, there was what? For how long? This say half an hour is our half an hour. You must apply the day to what? Your principle. Here it is now. Here's the map. Take a picture. I don't think it's in your handout because I couldn't get it in there. But it says now, in prophecy, a day is a little year. One day, one year. One hour is one twenty-fourth of a day of two weeks approximately. Now watch it now. Therefore now, half an hour is what? That's how we say it will take us seven days to get to heaven. And again, if you don't apply the day to a year principle on the plagues, then you can't apply it here. You can't apply it, and no, 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 it has to run consistently. So saints, based on that math, we're getting 365 days with a plagues. So, when probation closes on between here and the coming of Jesus, some will say we have at least a year before Jesus comes. Because if he cannot come until after the plagues are finished. You see the math? Now listen, saints, I know this is new for some of you, but don't, don't just take my word for it. Please, go home, read your Bibles. Are you with me? Now, all right, now, when the word of God declares that those plagues will come in one day, it does not mean a day, 24 hours, because Revelation 16, blah, 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 blah. You get the point now. All right? Now, all right. This is a big one now. Number eight now. <clears throat> I'm trying to get to the plagues now. While the plagues are falling, will they all be felt simultaneously by the wicked? You know, I see mercy in this. I see. The answer is yes and no. Yes and no. You said you get two answers. I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you why. Right? In other words, will one country experience all seven? And to me, that's mercy. And that is mercy. But there are a few of them that everybody will feel. I'm going to show you something. Now watch it now. Right? Great controversy says, these plagues are not all universal. All the whole, they will be cut off. They couldn't handle it. The most can't handle a mosquito bite tonight. We start crying. So God, it's still mercy. Now here are the saints. We have all the seven continents. Right? So will God put all seven in North America? Seven in South America? Seven in Africa? Europe? Asia? Australia? No, he won't do that. That's too much. Nobody will be alive. So even in his mercy, <laughs> that's to me, that's still mercy. Are you with me? Now, whew. let's get in the plagues now. All right, question number nine says now, what is entailed in the first plague and who receives it? Revelation 16, 2 says now, and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angel, go thy way and pour out the vials upon the... Uh, Vials, the vials of the wrath of God upon the what? Earth. And the Bible says now, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and, and there fell a noisome, grievous sore upon them that had the what? And upon them that what? So the first plague, fill it in now, it's a noisome, grievous sore. Who gets it? 
those who receive the mark of the beast. Now, question to the class now. Will everybody in the world receive this apart from those who, who have the seal? Yes, because if you don't get the seal of God, your only option is to get the what? That's it. So this plague is universal and universally felt. Everybody who don't have the seal will get this plague. It is a noisome, grievous sore. Say hey, this is serious. No. Is this plague worldwide? Yes, because the mark of the beast will be worldwide. The Bible says all the world wandered after the beast. So yes, the whole world. Friends, tonight, the first plague will be universally felt by all the wicked. Yes, this one for all over. They will get a noisome, grievous sore. The first one is universal. Every continent, every wicked person living will receive this if you don't have the seal of God. Now, why a sore? Now, again, I told you, all the plagues have some connotation to some ideology. Why are you? We've seen some sore. Syphilis. Chlamydia. Gonorrhea. STD. Why a sore? Now, watch this now. It seems appropriate that the first plague of the seven that falls on those in the modern harlot Babylon are those who are guilty of what? And what? Did you know tonight if a man keeps his wedding vow, he, a woman, they can never get AIDS or STD or CLAP or, well, let me back up. AIDS can be transferred to blood. So take that one out. But say, for instance, CLAP or STD then. If a man keeps his vow with his wife, or if a person decides, I will not commit fornication, that person cannot contract an STD. So the reason why the first plague is like an STD, because we have committed, we, now we, them have committed spiritual fornication. You see the math? And I could imagine somebody say, call the doctor. The doctor said, I have it too. <laughs> Go to the free clinic. All the nurses and have it. And noise is like a sore you can't shake. Noise, some grievous pussy sore in your lip, in your head, on your foot. Is it serious? William Miller, a powerful preacher, said, William Miller said this now. And noise, some grievous sore indicates the delusion of the body of and that the constitution is laboring under an inward disease it's a sore it is internally and it break out because internally they're never right watch this now it is therefore a fit emblem to represent the exposure of the corruption taking place in Christianity read it when you go home we are told, these, Bun said, these running sores produce great pain and are lonesome, nauseating to the sight and smell. They are similar to the sixth plague that Egypt boil, breaking out in the bomb or blister. It is called a botch of Egypt, a sore that cannot be healed. This is serious. The Bible says, Peter says, while they promised these false preachers liberty, they themselves are servants of what? So internally they are corrupted. And you know, when you have a pimple, it's something inside wants to come out. The blackhead, you pop it. So because the inside was corrupt, it just break out into a sore. Right? Corruption is, what does corruption mean? It means loss of integrity, virtue, morals, corrupted. And that's the state of Christianity. Corruption going on. Are you with me? Right? Now, look at the second plague now. What takes place under the second plague? The Bible says this now. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. And it became as blood of dead man. And all the living soul died in the sea. Fill it enough, saints. 
the sea and the oceans turn to blood. That sea right there that we pride ourselves over, it will turn to blood. The seas and the ocean, every sea. Now, is this one worldwide? Yes. Every sea, every ocean will turn to blood and everything in it will die. Now, why? No. Your handout says, the word soul in that context, pasha means creatures. Obviously, refer to the marine life. Friends, when the Moses smote the waters before Pharaoh, his great men, they saw the waters which were adored turn to blood. It was putrefied, mass for seven days. The people could not use the water for any purpose. You know, tonight, there are some powerful creatures in the sea. You know that? The blue, the blueback whale. I mean, there's some massive marine life. When things die in the sea, what happens to them? It floats. And it comes to the surface. Could you imagine all that is in the sea? Shark, all these creatures die. And they, and they have to float because nothing to eat them. The shark who eat, the shark that is dead. Are you with me? Note now. When we visualize the mammoth amount of life in the ocean, what horrendous calamity this will be. Probably the dead sea life by the multitude, millions and tons will be washed upon the layer. Maybe for miles. Not only will the, the, the order river mouth bleaches, but the stench will... You know, sometimes, you ever smell one little fish head? You say, gee, what a boy. One little fish head in a garbage can. Make you want to run. Could you imagine worldwide? This is serious. Creatures. And the creatures has to suffer for man's disobedience. Because the fish didn't sin. It was mankind that sinned. So every, that means all those who love them, snapper, huh? Kingfish, huh? You're going to have to eat your fingernails. <laughs> so you cut off all your sea life. And that's why I'm telling you, it's better now to make a transition to the vegetarian diet. <laughs> because soon you won't get any kind of fish to eat. Because all of it will die. Watch it now. Question number uh, 11 now. Third plague now. What takes place under the third plague? The Bible says now. And the third angel put out his vial upon the what? River. Rio Grande River. That you prize yourself on. The Bible says now. And the fountains of waters were turned to what? So both the rivers and the oceans, every water turned to blood. The Bible says now. And I, Why? And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, which was, and shall be, because they, have, because they have judged us. For they have shed the blood of thy saints, and thou hast given them what? Oh, oh, fill it in now. Rivers and fountains and waters are turned to blood. So this one will be universal. Wherever there's a river, wherever there's a sea, so the first and the second and the third are universal. Wherever there's a river, wherever there's a sea, wherever there's a spring, every water will be turned to blood. So therefore, the wicked will not have no water to drink. Now let me get some water tonight because I got something to drink. <laughs> Could you imagine, brothers and sisters, the man goes in his fountain to cut on water and then look, ah, blood! You try to brush your teeth. Blood for one year. watch this thing now now so both the second and the third will be felt so wherever there's a water all over the world friends there is this one uh, will be where is it turned into blood why does God turn the waters into blood why every river here's why now here it is now note the reason is given. The nations have craved for blood. The persecuting church has shed the blood of millions. She was drunk with blood of the saints. Those who feel the effects of these plagues have followed the papacy, so they share their faith. The wicked shall has just condemned the saints to death. So before Jesus comes, there's going to be a death decree that those who are loyal to God's commandment should be killed. And the Bible says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever what? 
So you want blood? So could you imagine the wicked? Blood for one year. No water. No kind of water. No weir. No spring. Now watch it now. What will God's people drink and eat during this time? Now, saints, let me say this. Satan has used this text to deceive us from preparing for the little time of trouble. So what many do, they use this text and they apply it to the little time of trouble. But this text is in the context of the plagues. I'm going to show you something now. The Bible says now, and he shall dwell on high. His defense, his place shall be, sorry, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the what? So at this time, God's people are living in the mountains. Not in your house. You're running. And in Isaiah says, bread not, and not butter. And this ain't going to be no white bread either. Whole wheat bread. Talk to me somebody. Bread shall be given him his what? So during this time frame, the people of God who have the seal, they will have water to drink. They will have plenty of bread to eat. Why must God provide for them and them not for themselves? The Bible says, go back to the text now. The, the, um, the Revelation says, Therefore her plague shall come in one day. Death, mourning, and what else? So the plagues will wipe out every food supply. That's why God has to provide for his people. Now, look at this now. Now, so fill it in now. God provides bread and water for them during the falling of the plagues. Friends, tonight, God will not provide bread and water for you. You know why? Because the plagues haven't fallen it, and you can go work. So don't come quote this text, oh, bread and water is sure, and you're home, you're surfing the internet. Man for work? Now, here it is now. This is where we, we as a people, FYI, are confused. There are two times of trouble. The little time of trouble begins when the Sunday law passes to when Michael stands up. It is at this time frame, you can't buy and sell here. That's why we are told, move to the country, get your garden, grow your own food. Because you can't buy and sell here. Now, look what happened now. Can the wicked buy and sell here? Yes. They can buy, sell, trade, everything. So, they can buy and sell here. We can buy and sell here. But when the plagues fall, ain't nobody buying and selling. And the only person who can eat here is the righteous because God now provides bread and water. Why? Because the plagues destroy everything. So when you quote Isaiah 36, 33, 16, you can't put it here. You must put it over here because it, the plagues will wipe out everything. So yes, God will provide for his people. Now, Question number 30 now. Now, what takes place under the fourth plague? So the first one, we have sores. Second one, seas, waters, third, uh, waters turn to, 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 to blood. Now, what takes place under the fourth plague? Revelation 16, 8 says now. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the what? And it was given power to scorch man. Now watch this now, saying, with fire. And men... And, and the men were scorched with great heat, underscore, and they blasphemed God, that which had power over these things, and they gave him the glory, he didn't repent. So the Bible says now, the sun is scorched. Now think now, if you have blood, and you have dead creatures, and the sun hit it, ooh, it intensifies the heat. Now, look what happened now. If too much sun hit the corn, and the color will happen to it. It burns it up. So you see why God has to provide? Because once the fourth plague hits, the sun will destroy every green, every mango tree, apple tree, cocoa tree, whatever tree you have, is gone. Too much sun, kill it. Are you with me? So nothing will be around to eat. Now, 
It is doubtless the heat of the sun during the fourth plague we brought the famine in Joel. Everything is destroyed, right? It's in your hand out now. Under the fourth plague, the sun brings blessing, right? Uh, the sun warms and cheers and gladdens the mammoth's control. Climate, right? But the excess warmth and the energy destroys life. We learned, Paul said, now, the reason why God sent the sun, here's why now. Paul says, of the wicked. Romans 12, 125 who change the truth of God into a lie, who worship and serve the what? Then the what? Is the Son a creature? Yes. Who created it? God. On what day? Here it is. We learn on the, 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 the fourth day, God created the Son. So the Bible says people would worship the creature than the creator. In Ezekiel chapter 9, we looked at it a couple of nights ago, the last sin they did, they worshiped the Son. Friends, worshiping the why? Because God says, keep the seventh day. Man said, no, me want Sunday. Even though you know Sunday is wrong, and God said, fine, you want Sunday? Get ready for sun burning. I know sun tan lotion can help you. That's the reason why God sent the sun. Because when we go to church on Sunday, we're worshiping the host. We learned this the host of heaven. Nimrod was the sun. Simiramis, the moon, and Thomas was Easter, bun and cheese and egg. All that, we learned that. All these are these paganism saints, I'm telling you. And if you want to escape sunburning, you need to get on God's program. It's coming. Now watch it now. Question number, um, number 14 now. So the sun destroys uh, and burns people, right? What takes place under the fifth plague? Now this one is serious. The Bible says now, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the who? So we know where this one hits. The seat of the beast. Who is the beast? Who? Alright. Right? And the Bible says now, and it was full of what? And they gnawed their tongue. Gnawed their tongue. And they blaspheme God. What is blasphemy? We learned blasphemy. A man who says God, a man who can forgive sin. We learned that. God of heaven, because of the pain of their sores. So they got the sore. There it is. See that? They got the first plague. And then they get the fifth. That's double whammy. So the beast will get the first. And the fifth is only for them. So what happens? The Bible says darkness. So the fifth plague brings darkness. Darkness. I'm going to show you why now God sends darkness and not light. Now, who is the beast we learn? The beast is the Roman Catholic Church system. So the, where is the seat of the beast? The Vatican. So guess what? The fifth plague will fall in, in, in which country? Italy. What city? Rome. So the fifth plague falls here. Are you with me? I lived in Italy for a while. I know what I'm talking about. I lived there for two years. Are you with me? It falls on the seat of the beast. Darkness. Why does God send darkness? Look why now. Revelation 17. John saw a woman. This woman is a Catholic church. And John says, she had a golden cup in her hand. And in this cup was all kind of filthy abomination. And John says, all the nations drank from this cup. So guess what now? In this cup is darkness. And she passed the cup around. And we drink it spiritually. Saints, it's darkness. Listen, I used to drink from this cup. My grandparents were Anglican. Did you hear what I just said, saints? If you have kept Sunday unbeknownst to you, you have drunk from the cup. And if you're still keeping Sunday, guess what? You are still drinking from the cup. Here are some of the things that are in the cup. Ten commandments are not binding today. Rome teaches that. Sunday worship is in the cup. Secret rapture is in the cup. Natural immortal soul. When you're dead, you're still alive. That's in the cup. Eternal hell burning. Ain't no hell. Hell ain't. Where is hellfire tonight? Hell is up. Get ready to come down. We learned that. Right? It's in the cup. Confessing your sins to a priest. That's in the cup. Counterfeit baptism, that's in the cup. Let me give you some more. Confusion of tongues is in the cup. Intercessor of the saints. The saints pray for us. They don't pray for us in heaven. 
is in the cup. Adoration of Mary. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us now and of our doom. That's in the cup. Salvation by works is in the cup. Eating unclean animals is in the cup. Shrimp, conch, janga, whatever you eat is in the cup. Future Antichrist is in the cup. The Antichrist, he's the Antichrist. Are you with me? And praying with beads. All that just came out of Rome. So Rome pushed the darkness. So whatever you sow, you reap. Are you with me? Note now. This, this is poured out upon the seed of the beast. The papacy. Seed of the beast is where the papacy is located, which is the city of Rome, right? The headquarters. Why? The headquarters of the papal kingdom have kept millions in spiritual darkness so long. And God now visits them with the same darkness upon Egypt. Because you are responsible for the darkness. You reap what you sow. The Bible said now that they gnawed their tongue. I wonder why they gnawed their tongue now. Note now. The same power that caused unnumbered millions of martyrs to gnaw their tongue for pain on the rack, on the stake, now receive the terrible penalty meted out by the eternal law of justice. They are judged as they judge. What they gave to others come back upon their head. We learned last, last couple nights ago that Rome invented torture for people. Saints, Rome did these to the Christians in the dark ages. Look at this, saints. Man, uh, 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 they're gnawing their tongue. Can you imagine your joints? I told you, I had a surgery. I got hit playing football. When I fell, my shoulder popped out. Popped back in. Over the years, it kept on popping out. It got so bad. I was playing ball four months ago, and a ball came over my head, and I turned. It popped out. Had to have surgery. They had to go in and pull a tendon. I'm still in therapy. Let me show you how bad it is. When your limbs are popped out, it is no joke. Rome did this to convert people. Look at that. One hand and a, and a little thing. They, that's what they did, right? Look at that. These are instruments of torture. People are like, no, look at this device. They did that to the Christians. What you sow is what you reap, Catholic Church. Look at that. That is sick. How would you do that? To convert people to Christianity? That's not That is demonic. That's of the devil. Look at that. Huh? Like you're roasting corn. This is satanic. And the priest. Look at that. Your man arm turned back and you're twisting it. That is wickedness, man. Huh? Look at these torture. They did that. They nod their tongue. Right? The tongues, I so saw you get the point. So, the tongue, here it is now. Bond said, the tongues of the papal leaders have spoken blasphemies against God, his name, his sanctuary, his truth. And now because of the physical, mental anguish, they punish their own tongues. They gnaw their own tongues of pain. What they sow because you, huh, huh, and tell pure lie. What you sow is what you reap. The fifth plague falls on the Vatican. Darkness. Darkness. Fifteen now. What takes place under the sixth plague? Now I must admit, this one is not as technical, is, is, is very technical. And I must admit, I don't know all that relates to it. And I could go into it, but it's, it's going to take a session by itself. It says, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great what? Euphrates. And the waters therefore were dried up that the way of the kings of the east may be prepared. Now, the river Euphrates, right? The Bible says now, let me, let, let, let me, let's fill it in now. The river Euphrates is dried up. Now, 
most Bible scholars say this is not the literal Euphrates down there in Iraq. It must be symbol of, you know, water is life. The river Euphrates brought life to ancient Babylon. This river Euphrates must be the influence or the support that the Catholic Church had. It is dried up. Note. The river Euphrates represents the people over whom mystical Babylon holds, right? Uh, modern Babylon trusts in her Euphrates, which is the World Council of Churches, the IMF, all these multi-companies support the Catholic Church. So this is the Catholic Church. Now this is the woman. And these are all the kings of the earth. Who are the kings of the earth? Here they are. Popes, presidents, all of them are tied with Rome. They support her. So they, they would symbolize the, the Euphrates that are dried up. The influence is dried up. With me? And the Bible says now, uh, let me back up. Here it is. The Bible says, well, you can read it when you go home. All these are the, so these would symbolize the Euphrates because the Catholic Church needs America and other countries to do her, her, her business. So what happens now, the influence is dried up. The Bible says they turn, here it is now, the Bible says, and, and, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate who? The Catholic Church. And shall make her what? And what else? Naked and shall eat her what? And burn her what? So they, they will no longer support her, but it will be too late because the plagues are falling. They realize now, oh, oh, we've been deceived. So this is the, that's why I said this one is more technical. But nevertheless, saints, we don't want to receive it. Are you with me? Now, and again, I could say more, but again, time is of the essence. Right? These are the river Euphrates. All these Bilderbergers, Trilaterals, Columbones, all of them are together. Freemason. All of them are the same thing. Here they are, all of them. Even Solomon saying himself. The guy from Kung Fu guy right here. All of them. All of them, Mandela, all of them were in, are in league with Rome. These are the Euphrates, the influence that sub, this symbolized the water that gave her life. It will be dried up. Right? Here it is again. And, and by the way, did you know, and I told you before, the Catholic Church was heavily backing Hitler. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And did you know when the Third Reich fell, when D Day came, the Catholic Church gave most of Hitler's high-ranking officers passage to Argentina. The Vatican gave them money, changed their names, and they went to South America. Listen, because the, 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 Catholic, the, 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 the Catholic Church don't like the Jews, because they say the Jews who killed Jesus. But yet Hitler was, was funded by the Catholic Church. This is, this is history. So you can see the... You re, Euphrates symbolized the people who supported the Catholic Church. Right? Now, all right, number 16 now. All right? Good time. 10 minutes, I'll get you out of here now. Okay. What takes place under the seventh plague? Only seven. Now, this is important now. Bible says now, and the seventh angel poured out his vial upon the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple saying, from the throne saying, it is what? What is done? Time is done? What time is done? Now I'm asking you, what is done? It is done! What is done? Now saints think, how many plagues are there? So if the seventh angel put us plague, it, it is done must mean that the plagues are, this is the last one. Some will say, the plan of salvation. It could not be because we're under the seventh plague. Salvation ended six plagues ago. So this it is done, meaning this is the last. It is done. No more plague after this one. Now, but the Bible says now, and there fell upon men a great what? Out of heaven. Every stone the weight of a what? Uh oh, fill it in now. Friends, Job said this, Hast thou entered into the treasury of the snow? 
Or hast thou seen the treasure of hell, which I have reserved against the time of what? Job says, don't you know that God has some hail up there? Get ready to rain down. Tell it now. Hail falls from heaven. Saints, these hail are so powerful. It will level this building. You say, oh, let me steal you have in here. Them little one ton or two ton. And ain't nothing to compare with what's going to happen. Listen, we've seen little hail storm. You know, the damage it. Go on YouTube and type in hail storm. Little pebble. You see what it does. Listen, no, no more than this little right here. I've seen them. I lived in Georgia one year. We had a hail storm. Cars were dented. Little stale. Now, this ain't on the computer that. The Bible says hail falls from heaven. Now, hail, this is the same as the seventh in Egypt. Why are they identical? Why does God use hail? Why hail? Watch it now. In the Old Testament, the law required that persons convicted of notorious crimes to be what? So hailing is a type of what? Good class. Now, why would God use the seventh plague to be hail and stoning? Now, in Israel, if you were guilty of these crimes, you were stoned. Till it did now. If you were a murderer, if you committed premeditated murder, you were taken out. Even though you repented, and you were stoned to death. Today, we make murderers fat. They live a good life in prison. Which is unfortunately. Let me tell you something. You better pray I don't become governor general in this country. Because I is bringing back capital punishment. Yes. Oh yes, I would bring it back. Yes, I said it. Take a picture and quote me on it. I would bring it back. You kill a man, blood for blood. If it's not self-defense, you're going to die. They were stoned to death for murder. People who practice necromancy and the occult, if you visit the Chinese man and the obia woman on the corner and you have on your guard ring and they found you were stoned to death. If you were caught up in witchcraft and Ouija board. And let me ask you, have you ever wondered... FYI, have you ever wondered why the dots on the dominoes are black and white? No, good. I know you didn't. Or wondered why the dots on the dice are black and white? Or whenever a pope, a president visits a pope, let me show you, they wear black and white. Let me show you. Huh? You ever wonder why that? Huh? You ever wonder why every time he's in white, they're in black? It's the same reason why the dominoes are black and white. And did you know that the spirit of prophecy condemns domino playing? Yes, card, chess, and checkers. She says, I saw that heaven condemns these things. I wish I see. I don't want you to stone me tonight. So let me let me just bypass that. But that's for next time. But you do the math. Wonder why the dots on the dominoes are black and white. That's one of the worst games you can play in God's church. It is an abomination. And if you're playing it, you need to stop. And isn't it ironic? You have elders who will play that game all night. And you call for prayer meeting. Oh, say something, can't come tonight. Hmm? 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 Let me let you go. But do your research. Because I'm not whistling dick. I know what I'm talking about. If you're practicing these things, you are stoned. Saints, if you were caught in adultery with your pants down or up, you were stoned. Today, Hollywood give them an Oscar 
you were stoned. If you practice blasphemy, which say you are God, you were stoned. If you were rebellious, bucking the church standards, bucking the church, fighting against God, you were stoned. It's there. The Bible says rebellion is as witchcraft. A woman who proclaimed to be a virgin at marriage, but wasn't. She was stoned. Oh yes, I'm a virgin. Yeah, I have been touched by a man. Marry me, marry me. And when the man, oh, she was stoned. It's in the Bible. She better pray we were living in the Old Testament times. Because a holy power will get stoned. And man too. Hold on stoning going on in Israel. Now, idolatry. You were stoned. And you know, we in the West, we say, oh preacher, I don't bow down the statues. No. Let me give you a new definition. Whatsoever receives your first affection is your God. Friends, if the first thing you do in the morning before you pray is check your WhatsApp, that's your God. This is the last one I want to get at now. Breaking the what? And there it is. Break if you had professed to be a Sabbath keeper and you were caught buying gas on the Sabbath or cooking or ironing <laughs> And Moses found out. They would stone you. Now think now. If that is the case, why does God have the seventh plague to be stoning? Because there's going to be a universal Sabbath breaking before Jesus comes. Stoning. 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 Right? The Bible says every stone was the weight of a talent. One talent have I to not some take to the sky. Why? With I'm good class. Now, saying what is the weight of a talent? You ready for this one now? Sixty. Six pounds. Saints, you add speed and force to this. It is said if you drop a quarter off the Eiffel Tower, it can kill you if it hits you in your mole because the speed it picks up. Could you imagine a hailstone weighing over almost 70 pounds coming out of? past Orion, the throne of God, when that thing pick up speed, it, it destroy everything in its way. This is serious. You can't hide. Skull crack open. Are you with me? Stoning. Now, as they let you go now, since the plagues are about to be poured on, now, what does the Bible writers encourage everyone to do before the plagues are poured out. Saints tonight, listen. I appeal if you haven't remembered anything I've said tonight, if you're sleeping, you need to wake up because this is a crux now. Zephaniah says this. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O ye nations. Before the decree bring forth, before the day passes as a child, before the what? of the Lord come upon you before the day of the Lord's anger is come. So he's saying, listen now. Zephaniah says now, right? And this is what he says now. Ze Zephaniah says, self together, for the anger, he says now, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought judgment. Seek righteousness, which is right doing. Zephaniah say, you need to start doing the right thing. Seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day 
of the Lord's anger. We are told to seek righteousness, friends, and to seek meekness. Do the right thing if it costs you your life tonight. Saints, when I heard about the Sabbath, I am the only one in my entire family. My mother's side, who is an Adventist. Everybody is Sunday and some are heathens. When I heard the truth, I say, Uno on no own. Because I want to be saved. I had to do the right thing. Number 16, now as we close now, says now. What is it? 18? 18. It's a typo. 18, right? It says now. What about those who are still in Babylon of false worship system? The plagues are going to fall in Babylon. Babylon, we learn, symbolize confusion. What about them? The Bible says now. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. She is the mother all the mother daughters. Why? That he be not partakers of her what? And receive not her what? Friends, if you are going to church on Sunday, Sunday, listen, I'm not trying to be, be, be dogmatic or mean. It is the wrong day. And if you know and you continue, you're setting yourself up for the plagues. The Bible says, they are admonished to come out of confusion. You got to come. Listen, saints, I'm telling you, I know that your worship service on, on TBN, it makes you feel good. And, and, and That don't mean nothing. That don't mean a thing in the eyes of God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Saints, I'd rather worship God under a mango tree with truth than to worship God in error in a three-story building. God ain't impressed by no buildings. That doesn't move God. What moves God is are you worshiping God in truth and in spirit? You know, I taught, I'm a teacher by profession. And I taught special ed. And special ed, you know, is kids that you know, we call them, we call them retarded today. But we don't use that in America. You get sued. <laughs> you got to use that fancy term. Special ed. And I work with a little boy. I won't call his name. But he was cerebral palsy and autistic. That's like a double whammy. Right? And this is how we got that way now. I asked the mother, you know, you assess the kids. What happened? She said she had twins. Now, the daughter is extremely smart. When her water broke, the, the girl came out first. But by the time they got to the sun, the umbilical cord had wrapped around his neck and cut off the oxygen and as they tried their best the child came out autistic he will, I work with him and that boy was challenging you hear me very challenging I mean you know I, I had to tame him after a while but it was very very challenging the umbilical cord had wrapped around the neck you know when a mother gives birth to a child, even though the child comes out of the mother's womb, that child is still connected to the mother. You know what connects a child? Until the doctors cut that, and the doctors, I cut my sons, I cut both of my kids, I'm looking cord. Until that cord is cut, you know what happened? The child is still linked to its mother. Friends, the Catholic Church is the mother church. They created Sunday. And even though you are a Baptist or a Pentecostal or a non-denomination, guess what? You are still 
connected to the mother. You know why? Because the mother created Sunday and you are keeping Sunday. You have not yet cut the umbilical cord. And I'm afraid if we don't cut the umbilical cord, what happened to the little boy will happen to you. You will be strangled by false doctrine and you will set yourself up for receiving the seven last plagues. Tonight I beseech you come out of Babylon. Babylon is confusion. You go to one of the Sunday church service, the dead man is right there and they'll tell you he's in heaven. And to add into the injury, you go to the grave yard, what do you do? You don't look up, you know. You look what? No, where is he? Is he up or down? Because at the funeral, he's up. But when you go to the graveyard, you look. That is confusion. That's why God says, come out of confusion, saints. Come out and stay out. If we do not, we are setting ourselves up for the seven last plagues. May God help us tonight to seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be we may be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Let's stand for prayer. Were you blessed tonight? Was it clear tonight? To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Father in heaven, oh God, Jesus. Lord, what is in store for the disobedient tonight, Lord, is not pretty. And Lord, you have given us these warnings and admonition as a good father so we can avoid these things. It's not by accident that you have brought me here and that these people are here tonight. Lord, you desire to save us, but you will not save us in error. You will not save us in falsehood. Tonight, Lord, our eyes have been opened to these things. I ask that the Holy Spirit, in his own way, will bring about conviction to the hearts of your people. I pray, dear Father, that we will be like the Bereans. We would take these lessons and go back home and get our Bibles, get our King James Version Bibles, and read for ourselves so we can understand so the decisions that we make will not be based on sheer emotion but it will be an intelligent decision lord i thank you we thank you we bless you we praise your name because you're such a merciful god and you're not willing that any of us should perish but all of us should come to repentance. I pray that we will seek righteousness, O oh God, and we will seek meekness is our prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Tonight, there is someone who cares. Probation is soon to close. There is someone who cares. The night is coming on. There is hope for you tonight, mercy's hand withdrawn. Tonight there is hope in Jesus for you. May the good Lord now bless you and keep you. May the good Lord now cause his faith to shine upon you. May the good Lord be merciful unto you. May the good Lord give you peace, peace in your home, 